Venturing into the towering heights of mountaineering demands an unyielding spirit, even from the most experienced athletes. Avalanches, icy trials, and treacherous falls challenge the climbers. And in 1974, a group of eight Soviet women mountaineers etched their names into history as they dreamed to summit Lenin Peak, now named Abu Ali IBN, Sina Peak, a massive giant standing at 7,134 meters straddling the border between Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Their farewell words, goodbye, we are going to die, still echo today. In June of that year, a significant international mountaineering event took place in the USSR. While it appeared to be aimed at easing tensions between rival nations, but the reality was a mix of propaganda and a grand display of the USSR's pristine mountain treasures. The event caught the attention of a developing United States team, adding an international angle to the story. Amidst the spectacle, Arlene Bloom, a participant from the US, noticed the distinctive Soviet tents and unique footwear worn by local climbers. She pondered the contrast between Russia's space achievements and their slower progress in mountain conquests. The story began with a single woman who represented the American mountaineering team. However, news quickly spread that the Soviet government was putting together an all-female team of eight members, and the American team happily welcomed a new member, Molly Higgins, who was full of enthusiasm. In contrast, some international teams didn't have any women in their group. It's worth noting that Arlene Bloom, a courageous American climber, mentioned that many women were excited about joining the adventure. Arlene herself had tried to join, but was initially turned down. Nonetheless, she ultimately became part of the expedition by joining the Swiss team. Picture this scene a large camp accommodating around 170 mountaineers from 10 different countries. Alongside the river, there was a collection of tents and about 60 more climbers and officials from Eastern Europe and Russia had set up their own camping spots. In this diverse setting, where men outnumbered women, one standout emerged from the Soviet team, Elvira Shatayeva. At 32 years of age, she had already earned the esteemed title of Master of Sports of the USSR, the highest sports honor in the nation. During the introduction at the base camp, Elvira proudly displayed her coveted medal to the international mountaineering community. Now, let's move forward to an intense retreat after a perilous avalanche. Amidst the chaos, a lone mountaineer emerged, navigating through towering boulders and rugged terrain it was Elvira Shatayeva. For Molly Higgins, who saw this incredible accomplishment, Elvira became a remarkable representation of power and leadership, her intense blue eyes shining with an entrancing charm. She stood, commanding respect among a group of four Russian comrades who willingly followed her lead. As this scene unfolded, Mike Yokel, a brave American mountaineer, found himself in a tough spot, nursing a limp after a daring leap to escape an avalanche. Elvira acted quickly and organized help without wasting time, asking others to carry Yokel's heavy backpack. At that moment, Molly Higgins faced a crucial decision. Elvira reached out her hand in a friendly gesture, a brief interaction that left a deep impression on Higgins's mind. This meeting propelled Higgins towards a resolute direction, a strong aspiration to reflect the unwavering strength and seasoned knowledge demonstrated by Shatayeva, her newfound role model. Described by perceptive New York Times correspondent Christopher Wren, Elvira was a striking figure. With her distinctive blonde hair, regal cheekbones, and piercing blue eyes resembling those of a cat, she radiated an aura of authoritative grace. Her mission was no less captivating, leading a team of the Soviet Union's top female climbers in a bold attempt to conquer the towering Lenin Peak. Molly Higgins approached Elvira, wanting to team up with the Russian women. However, her request was met with a strong refusal, 
a feeling also shared by her friend Arlene Bloom, whose story started this adventure. The warm atmosphere at the dinner table, filled with camaraderie, turned chilly, briefly making Bloom feel ashamed. But Elvira offered a welcoming hand, breaking through language barriers and preconceived notions. Elvira revealed that Soviet men doubted the female team's ability to conquer the towering 7,134-meter Lenin Peak, the exact summit her team aimed to reach. An ambitious goal emerged, a new route via the northeastern ridge, descending to the challenging Raz del Naya Peak through the northwestern ridge. This plan, even more demanding than what experienced male Russian mountaineers attempted, raised Bloom's worries. Yet Elvira's unwavering resolve left no room for uncertainty. This was a united group of eight extraordinary women, Elvira, Nina Vasilieva, Valentina Fate, Eva Ilsenar Mukamadova, Tatiana Sardashova, Galina Perik Yoduk, Ludmila Manzarova, and Arina Lubimseva. These skilled climbers had a strong connection from their past expeditions, which laid the foundation for an extraordinary adventure. Vladimir Shatayev, Elvira's husband, chronicled their dynamics in his memoirs. However, their audacious undertaking faced skepticism, especially from their male counterparts. While the Soviet female mountaineers earned admiration, male climbers often looked upon them with doubt. Vladimir Kavanenko's proposal for them to join his all-male team was met with firm rejection. Most expeditions follow a single path, a well-established route both up and down, marked by life-saving shelters. Elvira's bold plan shattered this convention. On the way up, they would carry tents and supplies, and on the descent, they'd set up new camps at each juncture, a task not for the faint-hearted. But on July 26, 1974, when training and acclimatization were in full swing when an earthquake shook the Pamir mountain range, an avalanche of heart-stopping proportions and the mountain's fury striked upon Lenin Peak. The ground trembled, burying Deputy Leader Robert Craig and Mountaineer John Gary Olin from the American team under a blanket of snow. Time was of the essence as fellow climbers sprang into action, managing to rescue Craig, but tragically losing Olin in the effort. A second relentless avalanche followed, trapping Craig and his two rescuers. In this dire situation, a glimmer of hope emerged. The Soviet government dispatched a helicopter loaded with supplies, a lifeline amid the storm. With improving weather conditions, reinforcements arrived, freeing the stranded climbers from their icy prison. It was a harrowing ordeal that lasted four agonizing days. In the midst of this turmoil, the determined American women pressed forward. Molly Higgins achieved her ascent on August 3rd, followed by Marty Hoey's triumph on August 4th, etching their names in history as conquerors of Lenin Peak. They wisely chose the safer Raz Del Naya route, witnessing their extraordinary accomplishment. Meanwhile, the Soviet women were getting ready for their turn to climb. Eva thought ahead and set aside a day for rest. She did this to make sure her fellow climbers from the same country would do well. The Soviet women showed an impressive mix of smart planning and strong determination as they got ready to go up the icy northern peak. Eva timed everything perfectly, arranging a well-thought-out delay. This way, they could climb on their own and didn't need help from anyone else. However, Eva's ingenious move inadvertently led to a heart-wrenching outcome. Their departure, delayed by just a single day, would prove to be their final journey. On August 4th, Richard Allen North left his mark on Lenin Peak by conquering it solo. This monumental achievement, however, came with its own challenges. Struggling with a lack of oxygen at dizzying altitudes, North battled exhaustion and even experienced visions. Despite these hardships, he triumphantly started his descent from the summit. About 120 meters away from the peak, 
Richard Allen North crossed paths with a group of Soviet women climbers, their ascent measured and determined. Despite howling winds and limited visibility, camaraderie blossomed amidst the frozen surroundings. North, catching his breath, mentioned the thin air as a challenge, but the women responded spiritedly, proclaiming, we are strong women. As evening descended, a call resonated through the airwaves. Vitaly Abalikov, the base camp director, summoned everyone to begin their descent. An impending storm, a brewing tempest was racing toward their high perch. Yet, amidst the climb, the Soviet women stood resolute. The summit was almost within their grasp, and they remained unshaken in the face of nature's impending fury. The camp was set up on the eastern edge, nestled amidst icy slopes as twilight cast its enchanting hues. Elvira Shatayeva's voice crackled over the radio, her message clear. The weather was deteriorating with relentless snowfall. An intriguing paradox emerged, adversity embraced as an ally. Shatayeva's shrewd reasoning ensured the women's path would remain untarnished, unburdened by previous attempts. On August 8th, a date firmly embedded in the history of mountaineering, witnessed the triumph of Elvira's team as they reached the summit. As the clock neared 5 p.m. and the sky painted fading colors, a radio call resonated from the heights, a plea masked by poor visibility. Lost in a shroud of uncertainty, they made the pragmatic decision to establish camp, seeking refuge in the embrace of nature. Below, the American mountaineers, acting as vigilant sentinels at the base camp, braced themselves for the impending tempest. Clad in their protective armor of nylon tents, steel zippers, and aluminum poles, they readied themselves for the impending battle against the elements. A sharp contrast emerged as the Soviet women's cotton tents, reinforced with wooden poles, succumbed to the ferocious winds, unable to withstand the relentless onslaught. In the midst of this night filled with uncertainty, divergent accounts intertwine. According to Vladimir Shatayev's recollection, a directive from the base camp urged either an immediate descent or waiting until darkness lifted. An alternate version quietly suggests a descent at dawn, tracing the familiar path. A pivotal moment occurred on August 6th, as a walkie-talkie relayed Elvira's somber report, unrelenting weather, and zero visibility. Seeking guidance, the base camp commander advised a temporary halt, a break for breakfast with a reassessment scheduled for 1 p.m. As the clock struck the designated hour, a disheartening reality became apparent. The storm's grasp tightened, a relentless crescendo of forces beyond their control a crucial decision emerged. Elvira and her determined team chose to avoid staying put and began their resolute descent. A call to the base camp pierced the silence, a plea for assistance cutting through the windswept atmosphere. The commander's response was laced with the grim reality of worsening conditions, painting a somber picture. Each climber faced the prospect of individual descent, crafting their own path to safety. At 5 p.m., the radio crackled to life once again, Elvira's voice struggling against the backdrop of howling gusts. Hope dwindled, shattered by the unrelenting crescendo of the wind. Her urgency took a new form, a plea for the doctor's guidance. Illness had cast its shadow, affecting one of the women who was plagued by persistent vomiting, her condition shrouded in mystery. The challenge was compounded by the suspicion of a liver ailment, yet a solution remained elusive. With the dawn of August 7th, a solemn descent commenced, a determined journey weighed down by sorrow. Chatieva's voice, heavy with grief, cut through the airwaves, delivering heartbreaking news. Arena Lubin Siva, a courageous climber, had succumbed to the relentless cold during the previous night's descent, a somber truth emerged. She, a guardian of safety, had frozen while ensuring her comrade's passage. 
Buffeted by fierce gusts, the tempest had stripped them of their tents and tools, winds raging at speeds exceeding 145 kilometers per hour. Abakalov's plea echoed, urging Elvira to return alone. However, a sentinel's resolve prevailed. She remained steadfast, adamantly refusing to abandon her ailing companions. A glimmer of hope remained, as only two remained unharmed, their awareness intact amidst the dire circumstances. A mysterious radio signal reached the base camp, and Elvira's voice, once vibrant, was now tinged with melancholy. Amidst a scene of past triumphs, sadness overtook her spirit, a poignant moment of introspection. By 3.30 p.m., another message, wearied and fragmented, hinted at an apology, a burden of perceived failure. Desperation echoed, yet Avalakov's promise of rescue offered a ray of comfort. As twilight descended, a chilling scene unfurled. Three souls locked in battle with nature's fury. The wind, an unyielding adversary, roared at speeds ranging from 128 to an astonishing 160 kilometers per hour, while temperatures plummeted to a harrowing negative 40 degrees Celsius. In the fading light of 8.30 p.m., Elvira's final transmission resonated, a haunting farewell, a chorus of regrets, a plea for understanding. With the arrival of August 8th, a glimmer of hope illuminated the sky, shedding new light on the unfolding narrative. The determined American team, consisting of Valence Deck, Christopher Wren, and Jacques Glidden, emerged from the clutches of the storm, embarking on an ascent marked by uncertainty. Little did they know, Elvira's team had encountered a cruel twist of fate, their journey plagued by an unrelenting tempest. A chilling encounter awaited, seven lifeless figures etched in the snow, a solemn reminder of nature's power. Amidst this scene, a collaboration with the Japanese team provided clarity as their radio unveiled the heart-rending truth. Behind Elvira's obscured form, two other figures lay partially concealed. Further exploration revealed more tragic scenes, a torn tent cradling two lives lost and the final traces of another, frozen while safeguarding the descent. Weeks passed and Elvira's husband arrived, carrying both grief and recognition. Rescuers recounted eerie echoes, the haunting sounds of memory, an unrelenting symphony of snow and sound. Experts, the voices of reason, painted a picture of climatic chaos, sudden storms, fierce winds, and the unforgiving grasp of nature's fury. Yet, the torn tents and a puzzle in the snow sparked curiosity. Hysteria, some suggested, is the mark of a troubled mind. But such notions wavered, as the storm spared no one, burying male mountaineers alongside their female counterparts in its icy embrace. Williamson, a mountaineer present during the storm's fury, spoke of unyielding strength. The women of the Soviet climbing team, warriors in their own right, bore no blame. Victims of circumstance, their story showcased the unbeatable human spirit. 